Hello everyone, uh, my name is Ryan Spring, I'm from Tohoku University, and this is a simple demo on how to get a Google Forms, uh, sorry, how to get a online speaking homework for your foreign language class that you can give through Google, and that will write into a Google Sheets for you. Uh, so let's get uh, right into it. So the first thing that I want you to do Okay, you can either look at my research page, uh, find the link below. Uh, it's either in the online tools. If you click here, uh, this will be the video. This will be where to click to get the code that I am about to show you. Or if you click on the codes programs how to, uh, this is number three. Click here to get the code. And this is the video that hopefully you are watching. So if you click here to get the code, it will open this page, okay? Don't be afraid of this page. This is everything that you're going to need to make your online speaking homework. Okay, so there's three files. This one gives text instructions, but if you're watching this video, you might be a beginner like me. In that case, you can mostly ignore this one. We're going to use these two files, and I'll show you how in just a moment. The first thing that you're going to need is, of course, a Google account. If you have a Gmail address, you already have a Google account. So you can click here and find your Google Drive, or you can go straight to Google Drive. If you don't know how, okay, uh, any Google, google.com, Gmail, anything like this, you can use this to pull up your Google Drive. When you come to your Google Drive, uh, You'll have lots of files and things, okay? But I need you to make a new Google Sheets. You can either go straight to Google Sheets or in your, you can either type Google Sheets and you can open Google Sheets from here. Or as I was showing you, in your Google Drive, you can right click. Uh, if you're on a Mac, it's command click to get this menu and you make a new Google Sheet. Okay. You can call your Google Sheet anything you like. My first homework assignment. Okay. For this code to work, okay, there are two things that you need to do. The first thing that we need to do is set up our uh, columns. Okay. The first column, this is going to write the date. This is going to write the date for our homework assignment, uh, the date that the student submitted it. The next thing is going to be the student number. So let's type that in. Next thing is the student's name. The next thing is the day of the week, the class period, and finally their answer. Okay. You can write anything you like here, but this is the order that my code uh, will put this into your Google Sheet. So once your Google students start to submit, it will put the students here, okay, uh, and you can organize it how you like later. The other thing that we have to do, go to the bottom, you have to name this sheet, okay. My computer is in Japanese, but if you are in an English computer, you click here. One of these says rename. If you're in Japanese, namaio henko. You need to change the name of this sheet to answers. A-N-S-W-E-R-S, -E answers. Uh, if you're on a Japanese machine, this must be Hankaku Romaji desu. The next thing that we need to do is click here on extensions. Uh, if you're in Japanese like me, this is Kocho uh, Kino. You're going to click and you're going to go to something called the apps script. Okay, please click on the apps script. And it will give you a beautiful page like this. Okay, you will notice that it looks just like this. The first thing that you're going to do once you get to this page, okay, go back to the first page that I showed you with my home page. 
there's two pages. One says Google script code dot GS. You're going to click on this. Okay. When you're here, select everything, copy, come back to your apps script. You want to delete anything that's here, and then you want to just paste. Okay. Paste exactly what I pasted. Okay. Uh, most everything is ready for you, but there's one more thing you have to do. Okay. Uh, go to your Google Sheet. Okay. At the top, you can see the web address for your Google Sheet. You're going to copy that. Inside of your app script, look at the ninth row here. It says var ws equals spreadsheet app dot open by URL. And right now it says quotation marks URL. You want to paste. Okay. You don't want to delete the quotation marks. You do need the quotation marks. Uh, you can delete URL first, but you need to have two question marks. And then you can right click and paste. Okay. You're almost done, I promise. Then the next thing we need to do, near the top of the page, there is a place that says file. Uh, this says file in Japanese. And next to here, we need to push this plus mark. And you get two choices, script, scripto, or HTML. We want to select HTML. Okay, And you want to name this HTML page. Okay. What's really important, this must match this exactly. It will automatically add .html. Please don't worry about that. Everything that's before the period, that has to look exactly the same as here. Because I set it up to say HTML page, let's just keep it the same. HTML page. Okay. Then, when you look here, I want you to do the same thing. Please select and delete everything. Go to my page again. We'll go back. We copied and pasted that one. Now we're going to copy and paste this one. Okay, so click on it. This one's a little bit long. Don't be intimidated. You can do it. I believe in you. Okay, scroll all the way to the bottom. Right click, copy. Or if you're a savvy computer user, you can click Control C to copy. Or if you're on a Mac, Command C. Then we're going to click and we're going to paste all of the code here. And believe it or not, we're almost done. Near the very, very top in line 8 and line 11, you'll notice there's these quotation marks. Okay. Uh, and it says that you can enter your title and you can enter your prompt. Okay. Uh, if you don't enter anything, it says enter title and it says enter prompt. So let's call this homework number three. Okay. And the prompt, again, do not delete the quotation marks. You need them around the text. But let's say, please speak about your favorite color. Or if you are British or Australian, you can use the U. That's your choice. Okay. And once you've done all of this, okay, we're going to click Save. And believe it or not, we are basically done. The final thing we need to do is deploy this. If you come here, there's the big blue button that says deploy. I'm on a Japanese computer, so this says deploy. But as you might be able to guess, deploy means deploy. So let's click it. You get three choices. Uh, what we want to do is click on new deploy. Atarashi deploy. Did you get it? Okay. What we need to do is click here, 
on this gear. Okay. What do we want to make this? We want to make this a web appli, web appli. We're going to select the top one. Okay. So you want to make sure that this is selected to your username. This is my personal Gmail account, so that's what's here. You should give it a name. Let's say this is speaking homework three. Okay. Uh, and the third thing is quite important. It says, who can access this? The standard setting is only me. That's no good if you're going to give it to your students. So we have to click here and we have to change it either to everyone who has a Google account or everyone in the whole world. What settings do you want to use? I don't know. If your school, institution, company, etc. has Google Suite, then there might be another option that says something such as, uh, please make this available to only people with uh, my university Google accounts. You can choose whichever one you like, but if you want it to be open to lots of people, you can say everyone or everyone with a Google account. I'm going to go with that one for right now. And you click the blue button for deploy. You will probably get this message. It says, oh my god, you have to allow people access to your Google Sheet to be able to write into it. Is that okay with you? And you should click, yes, I accept this. Uh, what is the account? You want to click your Google account. And it will say, oh my god, I don't know who made this app. And of course it doesn't know because it's you. You get two options. You want to go to this one that says advanced. Okay. Uh, and then continue only if you want to do this. Okay. And then you want to click this thing that says go to and the name of your project. I didn't give it a name, so it says in Japanese, Mudai no Projecto, um, unknown project. Okay, so we're going to click it, and it says, do you want to allow people to write into your spreadsheet that is linked to this unnamed project? And you click allow. In Japanese, kyokasuru. It's making the thing. Then believe it or not, you're done. It gives you this URL, and so I'm going to click here to copy it. Yes, it's very long, I know. And then we're going to click Finished, Kanryo. Then we are finished. What I usually do in my Google Sheet, I usually make an extra sheet by clicking this plus sign here. And I usually paste the link here in case I need it later. So this link, you can give it to your students. Uh, you can use a different app to make a QR code for it or whatever you like. But you can do that, and when you click to open the link, it looks like this. So the student has to enter their student number, okay? Uh, and they have to write their name, okay? And they have to select the day of their class and the day of and the period of their class. They can click here to check their device compatibility to make sure that it's going to work. Uh, this does use automatic speech recognition software. Uh, almost every device these days has it already installed. In rare cases, it won't work, but if they want to check, they can click here. And then, when the red dot is finished flashing, they can speak. Uh, by the way, stop speaking for it to finish. And then you can see that the device is capturing your voice, no problem. Okay. Uh, if they get too many errors, then they should maybe switch devices, uh, borrow their friend's device, use their phone instead of their computer, use their computer instead of their phone, etc., etc. Okay. Uh, now, please notice, if they forget to do one of these and they click begin the task, it will give them an error message and remind them that they have to put their student number. Okay. So now that we have filled out everything, I can click begin the task, and you can see that Remember, we called it homework number three, and I said, please speak about your favorite color. And to be nice to my British and Australian friends, I added the extra U. Click Start Speaking. 
I recommend waiting about one second because it takes a short minute for the, uh, it takes just a second for the ASR, the speech recognition software, to kick in. When the red dot is finished flashing, you know for sure that it's listening. To be honest, you don't necessarily even have to wait for the red dot to completely finish flashing, but if you click the button and then immediately start speaking, a lot of times it will cut off the first syllable or two, which will make it kind of make mistakes when it's guessing the first word or two. You can see there's a timer here, but the student does not actually have to speak for the full two minutes. They can click stop speaking at any time. Uh, if the timer runs out, it does automatically stop them though. But let's click stop speaking. Then you can see you get this pop up. You now have one minute to revise your answer. Okay, so now you'll notice that the timer is started from one minute. And if they made a huge mistake, they can delete the sentence. I don't want to include that sentence. Or if they made a mistake with one of these sentences, they can try re recording just that sentence. If the timer does run out, it stops automatically, though. Okay, now if I'm satisfied with that sentence, it will put it here in its place. Okay, so they can decide to delete these sentences, re-record the sentences, etc. If the timer runs out, it will automatically submit, but if they don't want to wait for the timer, they can submit before the timer runs out by clicking the Submit My Answer button. Okay, they get this nice message so that they can uh, feel comfortable that the answer was sent successfully, and OK. Then let's see what happens. This is what all the students are going to do. Then in my teacher workbook here, if I go to my answers page, I can see that. Look, it gave the student number 1234, John Smith, Wednesday second period, and this was the answer. Notice that every time they stop speaking or they had a big pause, it puts a period uh, so that you can see uh, what they were doing here. Okay, and then you get their spoken answer here. Um, the automatic speech recognition works very well with native speakers. It does not work as well with second language speakers, uh, but you can at least make them practice speaking. You know that they at least turned on the thing and practice speaking. And um, if you want to have them say particular keywords, you can write small scripts to check for keywords, etc. For more on that, please see my other videos. Uh, thank you very much. That's all.